Park City Council meeting is called to order. Administrator, call the roll. Questions or comments? Okay, if you would please go to the mic. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ryan Sin. I'm at uh, 458 Manor Drive. Um, can we ask general questions about the budget at this time? Is that what? We're here sure. For? So. Um, I guess I would say that I'm I'm here to represent uh, the Spring Lake Park Citizens Committee. So if I can get my 10 minutes rather than my three minutes, um, I'm not sure if I'll have 10 minutes up front. Um, we went through the budget and we had a couple of questions um, regarding. Can somebody tell me what the current balances are on the general fund and what the unreserved balance of the general fund is at this time? Uh, I can if you'll wait just a moment. Sure. I'll get my 2009 budget. And if I could ask another question, maybe you guys know. Um, has there been a um, comprehensive uh, annual financial report for 2010? Has that been completed yet? Um. The audit. Um, is that accessible to the citizens? <clears throat> yes, it is. Yes, it, it is, is, Ryan. Yeah, okay. we have a financial yeah. report yeah. here first. Yeah, the only one I've had available so far is the 2009, so that's all I can really this work off 2010. of. 2010. Mm -hmm. So for, I guess forgive me if I ask some questions with those numbers, then maybe we can update those numbers to what they are in, okay. in 2010. Ryan, what was that first uh, request, a balance on the general fund compared yeah. to, to? Just what's the balance on the general fund and what's the unreserved balance of the, the general fund? So the total and then what we can actually According to my spend. last report, the balance of the general fund is $903,487. Sorry, could you repeat that? 903,487.70. And what of that is unreserved? It all depends on your technology. I would say it's all reserved because we only get paid twice a year. Mm -hmm. We get paid in July and we get paid at the end of December. And so the money we get at the end of December has to last us until the end of July. And so we need that money to pay our bills for the first six months of the year. I mean, I'm not disagreeing with that. I guess, you know, you have long-term debt and you have debt payments. And so I guess what the city can put against the, the budget and the spending for 2012 is only what's in the unreserved portion of it, correct? I mean, the reserved portion is reserved for debt payments and continuing maintenance and things like that that are already earmarked, so. Well, there are, there are debt service funds that's separate from the general fund. Okay. So I guess I'm just looking at, um, Looking at the financial report from 2009, it outlines uh, separation in the in the general fund between reserved funds and unreserved funds based on what you have already allocated to debt management, debt payments, things like that. So, what page is that? Um, in 2009, I would have to look at. Um, he was asking for a copy of the year 
uh, ended December 31st, 2010. Yes, he can have a copy of that, but he has to pay for it. I mean, he can come in and look at it at any time he wants to, but he'd have to pay for a copy of that. Okay, so I'm, that's fine. I mean, I'm, I'd like an electronic copy, I guess, if all we the other years are posted. Okay, 2009 is on the, on the web, and 2008 and 2007. So I guess uh, that's, that's not really what my issue is here. Um, we can take that offline, I guess. So there is a 2010 available, and that's, mm -hmm. that's fine. Um, could you outline? Could you tell me what the uh, what the total expenses are for the for the Parks and Rec Department for 2010 based on the financial report? Right, but they're joined on the 2009 report, so I'm wondering if they're joined on the 2010 report. Because I know the city separates them, but the well, auditor doesn't. We're here to talk about the budget. And I'm we're here to talk here to about talk, the budget, too. But we're not here to talk about 2010's audited statements. Right. So you asked for that information in a public data request, and I will provide that to you. But okay. that isn't what this meeting is for. Oh, well, I'll ask a pertinent question to 2011, then, without the 2010 <laughs> numbers. Um, so what is, what is the operating budget? of the recreational department versus the actual expenses of the recreational department. Because I guess what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a $50,000 every year, like even revenue amount that you're getting from the department. Right. That is revenues we receive from trips and softball tournaments, and those are user fees. Right. Okay. So when we're talking about taking cuts and we're talking about raising property taxes, mm -hmm. we're spending almost $300,000 on a recreation department that's bringing in fifty thousand dollars, that's a quarter of a million dollars that we're that we're spending. That I would say, well, it could be quality of life, but I guess if I have to choose between whether I heat my home or whether I pay for gas in my car or whether I pay two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for people to take trips, and we're paying almost two hundred thousand dollars, two hundred and what is it? I'll I guess I'll. Over two hundred thousand dollars in salaries for that department. So, I, I'm just looking at, and I, I like to talk about the budget. I guess so. Mm -hmm. Well, the salaries include the three full-time, one part-time office person, and the rest of those salaries are uh, very temporary part-time people that work at at the playgrounds. Now, is that parks or recreation? Because they're separated, and I'll go to that. What's the next one here? <laughs> so we're looking at um, the 2012 budget for salaries for recreation is $201,000 with liabilities, with health insurance and everything else, bring it up to $260,000. Um, and we're, so we're spending $260,000 for, and I, you know, our temporary people are $20,000 of that. So $240,000 of it is full-time uh, personnel to take people on trips. Or just classes, just senior activities. Okay. You do things from preschool all the way up to senior citizens, so it's not just trips. And that's fine, but okay. I guess if we're talking about raising our taxes, because whether we cut or not, our taxes are, have gone up. And if we're looking at a quarter of a million dollars here that we could cut out of the budget, and maybe we wouldn't take any trips for a year or two years or whatever. The trips make money. They, they don't make cost money. They, money. Don't lose money. they don't make money when you spend $280,000 in the budget and you bring in $50,000 in revenue. If you could tell me, are we making $330,000 on those trips? No. So we're spending $230,000. No. How, how does that? I'm, so our, our expenses are 200 and what's the total on that? $279,229 budgeted for 2012. And you're saying that you're going to get revenue of $50,000 out of that. So what? Every year we've been increasing what 
you know, we <laughs> increase it. La two years ago, it was 48,000. We right. said we can go 50,000. So the, those dollars are what we have in excess over the program fees that we spend. So we, we hire instructors and things to do the classes and pay for all the materials and all the fees. The excess is what we're putting back into the general fund. Right. 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 Uh, the, the programs, a lot of the programs we do don't generate any fees at all. They're the playground programs, free programs for the kids. So you have the kids that all summer long, their mom and dad are at work, they're at home, the people can't afford daycare, and so we're providing that service so in the kids in the summertime, they can be out there and going to a program that will be supervised with, with leaders in, in impacting the community in a positive way rather than having the kids just out and about running around or not supervised at all. So that's a free program that we offer to the programs. We offer a lot of senior programs that are free. Those seniors that are staying in their homes and don't have a lot of contact with other people. Their, their lives are shrinking, their friends are dying off, and we're keeping those contacts with them and they're making new friends through the programs we provide. Mm -hmm. So it's the quality of, of your senior citizens, of your children, of your adults being involved in getting to know other people and staying active because they can't afford to go join the Y or going to these more expensive things, we have a lot more low-cost programs offered for them to keep them engaged. So it's just a philosophy. That's that's fine. I guess it's. I, I just would not like to call the programs free because somebody pays for them. I think we all, well, those of us who live in the city, pay use. For them. Well, I, I, absolutely right, but it's a. It's but a you know user what? Free if you don't take care of the elderly. I'm not. They take care of us. If you don't take care of the children, then the police department end up babysitting for them. So it, it kind of works kind of up. You know what? Y you really need to go to a park and rec meeting so you understand what, what's happening there. We have a board, just like we have for planning and zoning, we have a board of commissioners that work for planning and zoning of citizens. Um, you know, maybe if you set foot in there, you you kind of see what's going on also. And I guess I don't want to take up all of my time with that if I'm allowed to ask a few more questions on this. Um, uh, can I just make one comment? Yep. We did, two years ago, we did have a workshop on this uh, with Barbara to Council about, we had a study on park and rec and, you know, what they were bringing in versus their expenditures. And they did bring in money, but yet it cost money too, but it's a service. It's a service mm -hmm. to the city. And at the time, we just felt that... Uh, it, it is what it is, and um, and the citizens obviously like it, so we just stuck with it. Unless there's some sort of major change on the council that they all vote to, you know, remove that service. It's it's it is what it is. It's going to be there. I can tell you that about 15 years ago, uh, the council was seriously uh, considering eliminating the recreation department. Do you remember that, Marianne? And I can tell you that this these two rooms were full of angry people. Let's, let's do it again. So it's you know, if you time. don't if you don't participate, it has no value to you. If if you and your kids participate, it, it has great value. So, right. like Marion said, it's a philosophy and it's a it's a value issue. I guess my question is just we're subsidizing it, whether we participate or not. It's yes. being subsidized. Yes. And There's that's no argument. So if I mean, if people are crowding the rooms, then great. Then people can organize trips and do things, but. Mm -hmm. When I looked, I guess my question with the 2010 budget is, when I look at the 2012 budget and I see that the budget for parks is uh, $240,000 and $849,000, uh, 240, and we just talked about the uh, the rec department budget being $280,000, that comes to like five fifty. dollars um, In 2009, according to the audit, the expenses for park and rec was actually seven hundred and ninety-nine thousand dollars. So, if I could see that, if we could know what the 10, 2010 numbers are, I mean, are these two budget numbers even close to what the actual expenses are? Or are you? Are there two different sets of numbers here? I mean, what's? Well, numbers are shown for budgeting purposes mm -hmm. in in how we're going to spend it. According to the government finance regulations, those numbers appear differently in an audit. They aren't necessarily, you can't necessarily go back and forth and compare document to document. Okay, so the actual park and rec budget provided in the budget, the 2012 budget, is not, does not match the audit. 
is what you're saying. I don't know. I'd have to take your word for it. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, it's, I mean, it it's almost two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars off. So you're up there looking at a book that we're not looking at. Mm -hmm. You have. You just have the. 2010 I have the book. the 2010. Right. So the 2000. But you're looking out at nine, right? Well, I'm reading. If you could read me the 2010 Park and Rec expenses, I could tell you what the 2010 Park and Rec actual say on here. Um, here we're looking at two hundred fifty thousand dollars for parks, and we're looking at. Um, uh, two hundred and sixty-six thousand, so just over five hundred thousand dollars. It says in two thousand and ten. Give that to Barb. So, but I think that's a serious topic for discussion. If we're looking at raising taxes and raising rates on everybody, and everything's going up, and we're not getting LGA, that's three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. Then I guess you know I'd rather I'd rather organize my own trips with my neighbors than have the city spend a quarter of a million dollars or half a million dollars organizing trips. So you can always do it again when, you know, stuff picks up, but, um, you know, I don't have to be elected so I can ask the tough questions, right? Um, and we don't want to seem unresponsive either, but, um, you know, like you say, if there's two rooms full of people who want the program, then the council listens to that. If there's two rooms of people full that don't want the program, and they listen to that as well. Do you know what that, you have that number? I'm looking for it right now. Yeah, and do we very, very rarely ever have somebody come into the council meeting for any reason whatsoever. So, you know, it's, it's nice to, have, to hear your opinions. One. Okay, in 2010, I've got expenditures, parks, and recreation. Mm -hmm. Recreation department, the original budget was 266,554. Yep. Actual was 259,546 spent. So you, you, they must have started separating them as of 2010. Yes, you see because um, here they have expenditures for parks and recs, and then they have expenditures for parks and forestry, and then they have a total recreation and parks. Mm -hmm. So be sure you're not reading the total recreation and parks because that's that includes much more than recreation. No, I'm reading page 7 on, on the 2009 uh, expenses. Yeah, they, the pages don't correlate. Right, right, and I understand that. Um, and I guess I can get on to another question then. Uh, in the in the recreation, I should say in the parks department. Sorry, my notes are a little out of place now. In the parks department, there's a 33% director. On uh, it's page E171. Right. And then there's a 33% director in another department, which I'll pull up here. Right. His but salary is divided between parks, streets, water, and sewer. So there's a streets director, right, and a parks director. No, no. I mean, they're 33 percent. It's one salary yep. divided between four departments or three departments. But so if it's 33 and 33 and 33. Well, it's 33 and 33. Three and then 12 water and, and, half sewer and 12 and a half. Yeah. So it's and one, water and sewer. one person. Right, and I guess I understood that, but I was just, I mean, the 33% are only listed in two places, and there isn't any indication that there's another director that has some sort of partial payment. It's in the water and sewer budget, which is not part of the general fund. So I guess that's why it's not in here. So, and then we've got the three 25% employees as well across right. multiple departments, but right. they're only listed three times. Is there a quarter that they're working for? Well, it could be in the building, and it could be in the sewer, and it could be in the water. And then, so, another thing with the, um, let me see if I can find my notes here. Well, we've got the, I, I guess we've got a city employee that's doing the janitorial work at the, at the government center. Yes. And we're paying workers' comp on a separate fund for just that employee. No. So he's not getting workers' comp from any other, he's not, we're not paying him twice on that, are we? No. No. So, because I know it's listed listed in here, so um, I think... As a matter of fact, that employee was never paid workman's comp. 
council budgeted for it. We budget for the insurance. Yes. I think I think Terry's wondering if you're thinking that he was out on workers' comp and we were. No, no, him. Oh. no, no, not that at all. I just yeah, I know it's insurance. Pay for insurance. Yep. Yeah, I'm just looking to see where that was here in the uh, in the government building. Can uh, can you tell me what the what the balance of the liquor fund is right now as well? Because I know it was a deficit in the last audit that I had seen. Um, yeah, I can. And that's somewhat deceiving too. We've we've not ever lost money. It becomes a deficit when we make the transfer. Mm -hmm. So it is it is making money um, in the liquor fund. Um, are you talking about the operating fund? Two hundred thirty two thousand six hundred six dollars and twenty one cents. And uh, the balance of the utility fund right now as well too. Uh, public utility operations one million eight thirty six three sixty three. So I guess, I mean, that's, um, do we have, so you're saying that the, the liquor store always turns a profit. Mm -hmm. It's not a, I mean, I guess looking at the last it's budget, um, we're making maybe $50,000 on $600,000 worth of uh, overhead with. Right. Okay. So, I mean, it's not like if I was running a business and I had $600,000 worth of expenses and I was pulling in 50000 a year, I might be concerned in terms of long-term uh, viability of that we are monitoring that although we have not um, and as a matter of fact there's a state law that says if you lose money three years in a row um, you have to go to a levy of the people to decide if you want to close the store but we have not lost money in any year um, it goes into deficit when we make the transfer which is a, mm -hmm. you know on paper yep. um, but Remember that the primary purpose of having municipal liquor is to control the sale of liquor in the city. Secondary is to earn revenue. We could just close down and not allow any sales, right? Sure. So. And then your taxes but, would but go we up. do, yeah, your taxes would go <laughs> up because we do transfer $150,000 from the liquor fund to the general fund. So then that would, mm. yeah, if, if all things staying the same. Our levy would be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars more. Okay. Um, and Ryan, I guess at this time, you've had right. more than ten minutes. Well, I appreciate your time. And I believe and, you can and, come into the city and talk and, with and people talk anytime you want. I mean, it's right. public. <laughs> My issue is, that, I mean, I'll stop. Is that I think the city could do a lot more, and we've talked about this for ten years now. Meeting minutes are still not online since last year, year before, 2009 is the last meeting minutes. Um, the audit, you know, and then asking for documentation. If we could just get that electronically, it seems silly for me to come down and pay a fee for you to copy it when we're already having email communications. If I don't have it, if I have it electronically, I told you I could get 11 and 12 to yeah. you, no problem. But when you're asking for 2007, I don't have it electronically. I've got to go up to the archives. I have to pull all that information together. I'm, I don't have it electronically, and I'm not required under the law to provide it. It's and we don't pay for I don't people have. to put it on. <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm asking, I'm talking in terms of the 2010 audit, where you could tell me that I'd have to pay for it. If our accountant has a disk, she can send it to you. Okay. But I'm I'm not aware of that. But she oh, might. She may very well. Previous years are available, but this year's is not. So. Yeah. Well, right. actually, we just got we it. We just We're, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? Would, would anyone else like to speak? Is now the appropriate time to uh, question the tax scenario, or is it not coming up yet? No, this is the time. Okay. <clears throat> I guess I'm here to get educated more than anything. 
Uh, Could I'm Stan, I have your name, sir? Yep, Stan Yoakum, 8021 Madison Street. Um, I, I would imagine most everybody uh, in the city is <laughs> a little perplexed here, and, and Barb did a wonderful job of explaining why the tax proposed <laughs> property tax for 212 for 2012 um, <clears throat> is rather shocking in view of what's going on with the market value scenario. And um, I just want to know if this seems reasonable. <clears throat> According to my proposed uh, tax statement here, my house value is down 15.27% and the city budget is going up or the city tax levy is going up about 7%. So. <laughs> Is, is that reasonable? Who knows? Huh? I, I'd say no, I don't think it is reasonable, but that's um, a function, not of city spending, but it is a function of the state change in how they calculate taxes. <clears throat> so the city basically has no control is what you're saying? We have control over what we spend and yep, what we spend it for, but we have no c control over the formula that the state applies. No, we do not. <clears throat> so our choices as a citizen uh, is to lobby the state legislature, I guess, and that's about right. it, huh? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you know, Heavily. It's, Heavily. It's, yeah. Well, it's, it's not that, you know, it's, it's unreasonable in total. I think probably uh, we're getting our money's worth. I don't have any complaints there, but the numbers just don't stack up uh, when you look at your proposed property tax levy for next year versus <laughs> versus last year when your house value supposedly is going down 15%. Right. You know, in the good years when our values were going up, our taxes were yep. going up yep. and, you know, everything, everybody was still upset, yep. but um, you could understand it if your value was going up and if you could sell your house for that amount sure, of money. Sure. And now values are going down and your taxes are still going up. No, that's not right. And nobody here, I don't, I don't think, would agree with that. <laughs> And, and I was shocked to see the values go down when I got my statement. I thought, I think two years ago they said we'd hit bottom on that already, but it's still well, going down peak, great we're now. we're down 40%, you know, it's, it's yeah. just ridiculous. You know, and that's the other thing with, with um, the city budget is the values go down, our tax base goes down, and now with the um, homestead exclusion, they're, they're taking a bigger chunk out of that smaller number. And then you, you take away all the tax exempt properties, the high school, the um, building next door, which is the um, administration building for the school. We have a MnDOT station. We have eight churches. One of them takes up an entire city block. Um, our parks, our city, you know, that's in, in two square miles. Sure. It's amazing. Um, Aren't you getting a lot of calls uh, from citizens uh, regarding uh you know, a seven or eight percent increase when we not know. everybody has experienced that and yeah. no, I've got I've gotten one call. Really? I but tried to call today, but no answer. <laughs> I heard the most from Mr. Dahl. The, the, the other yeah. The other <laughs> comment um, that's important too is that you know, we've had a couple of referendums on the school, as you can see that, that yeah, high we're, school we're, over there. We're talking about the city. Uh, well, I'm talking about tax increases in, in also. General. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, we had a levy go through the school, sure, sure. and uh, we had a levy go through the city. Now we just had another referendum that just passed on uh, another tax increase uh, go. And what, what I don't think is fair is that, you know, you know, it, it went to the voting table, but um, it, it was it was basically an increase for property tax payers, so people that didn't have to you know don't own, yep. they still have to vote. So that's what I don't think is as fair as a, why you know. But we didn't have a uh, levy or a referendum on city tax increases this year, did we? No. No. Okay. So you're saying the taxes are in general the budget is down overall, but my property taxes for the city is still going up seven percent. And the value of my house went down 15 percent. <laughs> it's a shame. It doesn't try. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. All right, thank you for your time. I always think of the young people who bought a house for $180,000, $190,000, and the value of that has just gone down, yet they've got to make that, that payment on that steep 
value. Jeez. I mean, I paid only twenty-five nine for my house, so to watch it go from one hundred and seventy-nine down to about a hundred thousand now, you know, doesn't again doesn't hurt. Me. I mean, doesn't hurt me as much as it would if I had paid that, and then everything and had it down. go down. So I mean, you can see why they're foreclosing. They can't afford mm -hmm. the payments, and it's a mess. Go ahead, Jason. Jason Laterno, 8001 Pip Street. Uh, I actually only have a question for Barb. You had said that 19% of the properties in Spring Lake Park are not on the tax rolls. Are tax exempt, that's mm -hmm. right. Do you know which properties and what percentages they hold? Like the high school, what percentage they hold? Um, we do. Do you have the breakdown? I do, not right here oh, with me. Okay. I just was asking because I was but figuring I that the high school had to have been at least a 10% increment. Yeah, you, you know, in, in it's addition, at least that. Yeah. yeah. So we do have I'm the numbers. About the one church over in the corner, that's another mm -hmm. 4%. Mm -hmm. but Park Terrace Elementary. Mm -hmm. But I just, you, you had said that no other city has that high, but again, we also have two big schools in our city also. Yeah, but we're only two square miles. So You're right. So a high know, school is a very big piece of property. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you consider Blaine with a high school, um, it has a lot less impact. We're talking 400 square miles. You know, so it has a lot less yeah. impact. Mm -hmm. The only other city in Anoka County that has tax exempt property anywhere near ours is Anoka because they've got all the city government and they've got the county. Um, but most other cities are between two and four percent, and we're 19 percent. Right. It's very painful. Okay, that's all I was asking. We Thank have you. those breakdowns, Jason. If you want us to send you the email by sure. PDF. Are you good? I can do that. Is there anyone else? Thank you for your comments and for coming in tonight. So at this time we have we go on to resolutions and or orders. Oh I'm sorry. Yes, at this time we will close the truth and taxation hearing and then go on to resolutions and or ordinances. And under that we have resolution adopting final 2011 taxes payable in 2012. That's Mayor uh, Resolution 1126. 1126. I also move to approve for the total levy of three million three hundred and twenty six thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars. A motion has been moved by Councilmember Mason to adopt the resolution number eleven dash twenty six. Any questions? Hearing none, administrator call the roll. Council Members Mason? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Dahl? Aye. Nash? Aye. And Mayor Hansen? Aye. Thank you. And if there isn't anything else at this time? Move to, to adjourn. A motion has been made by Council Member Mason to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This council meeting is adjourned.